Bitcoin is up 50, 50% since that day in, in four short weeks. Uh, so I, I am wearing the, the Bitcoin orange pants today. I have the, the Bitcoin bull sock game going. So the cape wow. and uh, big green candles. And I, I'm, I'm pretty psyched about, um, I'm officially declaring uh, three weeks from Tuesday, this coming Tuesday, is the official start of crypto summer. While others speak in terms of bear markets, bull cycles, and halving events, popular American investor and hedge fund manager Mark Yusko focuses on the seasonality of the crypto market. Winter, for when crypto asset prices are down and a little bit of reprieve during crypto spring. Then summer comes in all of its glory with massive tennis rallies and new all-time highs. Last year, just after the three Aero Capital Voyager and Celsius contagion, Yusko predicted that the crypto market was leaving the infamous winter behind and gradually transitioning to spring. According to Yusko, we did leave winter for a while, then Hurricane Sam hit, bringing in a lot of unwanted, dumbry, and attention for the global digital assets industry. With that almost behind us, the Morgan Creek Capital Managing Partner believes the cryptocurrency market is finally transitioning into summer. During the latest episode of Blockwork Macros in the Margin Weekly Roundup, Yusko estimated that summer is just around the corner for Bitcoin, Ether, and the rest of the cryptocurrency markets. Yusko also explains that the rally in the crypto and stocks markets is primarily driven by a burst of liquidity from the world's major central banks. A few weeks ago, Matt King, a global market strategist at Citigroup in London, estimated that despite central banks' pledge to lower inflation at all costs, around $1 trillion have been pumped into the global markets in a few months. According to King's analysis, the bulk of this liquidity pump came from the People's Bank of China, which instead of joining the Federal Reserve ECB trend, has continued to inject liquidity directly into its banking system. Even as the central banks have told us they're going to be tightening, it turns out that at a global level, they've just added $1 trillion worth of liquidity over the past three months, King said in February. Since King released the report, the United States has had a banking crisis that resulted in more rounds of liquidity pumps into the markets. According to Mark Yusko, these large waves of global liquidity are currently driving markets higher. While we await more significant rallies as next year's halving event draws closer, Yusko believes the continuous liquidity wave will be enough to usher us into crypto summer. During the discussion, Yusko also gives his outlook on the current state of the U.S. economy and what investors can expect from here on. Before we listen to Mark Yusko, please take a little time to like this video, subscribe to the channel, and don't forget to drop your comments and observations in the comments section below. Thanks and enjoy the video. Sellers are gone. All the big leveraged bad guys are gone. And it turns out that, uh, I just did a presentation on this yesterday. Um, hash rate, new all-time high. Number of wallets, new all-time high. Number of wallets with greater than 0.1 Bitcoin, new all-time high. Transaction size and volume, not all-time high, but, but coming back to, to being close. Of my presentation yesterday was, you know, crypto summer, uh, you know, surfing on a wave of global liquidity. China hmm. printed a trillion dollars since October, trillion with a T. Japan, uh, another couple hundred billion. The Fed put 300 billion back on their balance sheet. So, you know, we've got a trillion and a half dollars of liquidity sloshing around. And turns out people buy things that, that they like. And there's a whole bunch of people that, that like crypto and, and, and Bitcoin and ETH are the, are the biggest beneficiaries. Yeah. The, the data is there's, there's more buyers than sellers of, of ETH. ETH, I think, and I, I think I have this right, over the past couple of weeks has, has even outperformed BTC. I mean, you know, it was up 5% yesterday. You know, it crashed through 2000 and hit 2100 very quickly. So I, I kind of come down on, on the latter part of your analysis to, to say, mm -hmm. yes, there's a, a legitimate fear that, you know, people would, would unlock or, or, you know, de-risk some portion of, of, you know, what they've been staking. But I, I kind of come to it as there's no evidence of that. Right. There, there's just there's just no evidence in the markets of big liquidations of, of really anything. And, you know, there there's some, you know, lower level coins that that have just been going batshit crazy. It's tough to maintain 
optimism and energy in in the face of constant beatings, right? You know, the mm. whole line, you know, the beatings will continue until morale improves. Well, yeah. morale ain't going to improve. <laughs> I mean, you know, you beat people down and and they will they will sink lower and lower and and it was just it was a summer of beatings last yeah. summer. Or fall, yeah. the fall of beatings. And you know, bad people doing bad things and then government actors doing bad things and and suddenly there's this reprieve. Now, look, I I do think it's the calm before the storm. I I don't think that then, then they fight you phase is over. I think it's it's going to come back with us. You know, Ms. Warren is assembling her crypto army. As we head into a major election year in the United States, there is more and more evidence that politicians have politicized the cryptocurrency industry. Last month, Florida Governor Ron DeSantis announced legislation to prohibit the use of a federally controlled CBDC in the state. A few days later, Republican Senator Ted Cruz introduced legislation to prohibit the Federal Reserve from developing a direct-to-consumer CBDC. Cruz and the two other Republican co-sponsors of the bill say they are trying to stop the federal government from using a CBDC as a financial surveillance tool. In the same vein, Democratic Senator Elizabeth Warren has announced that she is raising an anti-crypto army. And politicians and representatives from both sides of the aisle continue to play all sorts of political games with the crypto industry, despite most of them having little understanding of the industry. According to Mark Yusko, this shows that we are still in the now we fight you phase of the industry's development. Yusko also believes the energy is better needed in other areas of the economy, which might not be completely out of the woods. Let's get back to the interview as he gives his outlook on the overall U.S. economy in the coming months. I think the economy is slow, slow-ish, slow-ish. Mm. Um, you know, I think I think first quarter number is going to disappoint. You know, fourth quarter number got revised down. Still not, not horrible. And look, last year, even though they're not going to call it, was a recession. It was a mm. mild recession. You know, 1% year over year, 0.9 year over year GDP. That That's recession. That's a 2001-esque recession. And mm. I, I think in the absence of the global wave of liquidity, right? Had China not printed a trillion dollars, had, you know, Kuroda San as his, you know, going away present, not printed another 200 billion, had the Fed not stepped in with Silicon Valley at all with this BTFP, um, I, I, I would be more negative on growth. Mm -hmm. I would say, you know, negative GDP growth in Q1. I would say negative GDP growth in, in Q2. I, I don't see that, right? I see a one handle in Q1. The biggest indicator is the 10-year. The 10-year yield has collapsed, right? It's down from four something to 3.4, something like that. Mm. And that's telling you that, growth is decelerating, not accelerating. Yet, if you look at Chinese liquidity provision forwarded six months and PMIs, it would tell us that PMIs have troughed and that economic activity is going to rise, albeit slowly. But so I, I think we're going to avert the hard crash landing, um, this idea of no landing. I, I think that's just a silly idea. There, there'll be a landing. I think you see it in, in activity, right? I went to a restaurant with the family the other night and uh, it was bustling. It wasn't slammed, but it was bustling. And again, this is a nice restaurant in you know, we don't have very many super nice restaurants in, in Chapel Hill, but we have a couple of nice restaurants. And um, and it was it was full. And that that's that's a good indicator. Um, you know, the airport over spring break slammed, slammed. A lot of people traveling for spring break. But I, so to answer your question, where are we in the business cycle? I think we are. I think we're past the trough. I think we troughed, you know middle of last year, third quarter or something like that. Um, yeah. We kind of, we kind of fudged the numbers with the SPR, right? We would have had much worse GDP prints last year if we hadn't drained the SPR and double counted the oil. 
I think that's a scam, but, but people believe it. If they start reversing that and start putting oil back in, um, that could juice the, or that, that could, that could hurt the numbers the other way. Um, but I don't know. We'll see. If you look at the last 20 years, okay, all of the increase in equity is the Fed balance sheet. 100% of it. 100% of it. And so when equities rolled over last year because they tried the QT thing, what did they do globally? Turned it back on. The QE is back on. And we are back to QE infinity. And because you have to, right? You can't have this entitlement program. And this is everywhere. This is Western Europe, Japan, US, all have the same problem. Aging population that's been promised all this stuff. You put their money into these passive 401ks, 403bs, and you cannot have a situation where the value goes down and they have to cover it. They don't have the money. There's no savings. Savings rate is plummeted. It's, it's plumbing new all-time lows. Yusko believes the tides are quickly changing, not just for the cryptocurrency markets, but also for the overall U.S. economy. According to the hedge fund manager, the wave of global liquidity will continue to prop up the markets while the Federal Reserve somehow manages to avoid a hard landing. Yusko certainly has more faith in the central bank's abilities, despite its not-so-stellar track record. The Apex Bank's insistence on denying the obvious and making appropriate moves at inappropriate moves must have lost it the respect of many American investors. What are your thoughts on Mark Yusko's assessment of the cryptocurrency industry and the overall U.S. economy? Do you think we are about to leave crypto spring for summer? Please drop your comments and observations in the comments section below. Also, ensure you like this video, subscribe to the channel, and turn on post notifications for more videos like this. Thanks for watching.